Sorry to interrupt, but whenever you're ready, go ahead and if you could explain what you've put together. Okay. So last semester, we built a CPU on the computer architecture course, and uh, uh, we only built the CPU in Verilog and uh, have the memory modules and the other testings done by TAs. So mm -hmm. we can have a line trace to verify our CPU is work correctly with the assembly code. And uh, this semester, we're wondering if we can build this CPU and uh, the other memory systems to the FPGA and uh, run the line trace on the host program. And yes, we done that. Um, so the main work is we need to use the M10K blocks to implement these memory blocks. And uh, we also need to write our memory interface because the, um, uh, the computer architecture process assistant use a ready well interface mm -hmm. to do the handshake. Um, and so if we want to use the M10K blocks, we need to write this handshake interface. So in general, we have uh, four memory blocks uh, three is a test source to give some human input or uh, it's a predefined input and the uh, test sync is to compare the number from the processor to our predefined value so we can check some functionality. It also have uh, uh, two memory ports, it's a data memory and uh, the instruction memory. We implement this four in M10K blocks. Besides from that, we because we want to we want we also want to take the trace. Uh, we need to take some signals from the CPU, like the instructions that flow from the pipeline, the ready, uh, squash, and uh, some other signals. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's also connected connected to the CPU with the M10K blocks, so our host program can extract it. Mm. And uh, at the beginning, we run some uh, test bench to simulate the whole system with the CPU, with the m blocks, with the interface. We also write some tasks to load the um, hex files, which is compiled from the assembly code to those m blocks. It, when the simulation is done, we also dump these memories to the uh, files so we can check them. Um, so here, this is the how the test bench works. Did um, you guys have to make your own compiler? Um, no, it's uh it's written by TAs. Okay. So it's com so it's it's a Python script convert the assembly code to the hex files. Okay. Okay. And this is the trace generated by the computer architecture TAs. So we can see these line traces are very good to help debug with the assembly code. Sure. And this part is is done by our FPGA system. So they are exactly the same. Cool. Uh, I can explain this trace. Okay. Uh, mm, the first, the, the whole, the whole, the whole system is a matrix times vector, uh, and I was written it by. Uh, I written it by assembly code, uh, and first it is used the CSR. The CSR is corresponding to the source memory. Uh, he told me before it's just like load the load the memory, uh, load the data into the memory, uh, and this is this is this means the number, and this is the PC, which means the the address of the code, the the this line, the address of this line. And this is the data loaded into. So for this line, it means that we load the this mm -hmm. zero into the X1 register. And after that, I just start to uh, start the matrix times vector process. Uh, and after that, uh, oh, it's yeah, CSRW, which means that I test in the sync sync memory to test that if the uh, if the data is corresponding to the memory just like the uh, this is the data right into the sync file uh, I can show you the sync file okay Uh, 
this is our assumption. This is our assumption code. I have around about four CSRW file to test if the x thirty three is correspond to is equal to fourteen and uh, around four four line of this code. Okay. Yeah, and if we compile this, the uh, let me check the the hex out will have this four four of these data, and our system will compare the four data if it's uh, if it's the the same with the. The same with the output from the CPU. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think the main difficulty during our implementation is um, we need to say simulate the MTK blocks yeah. because uh, we have an interface, we have CPU, we have memories, and we also have some. Uh, data load and data dump, so it's, the whole system is kind of hard to simulate and uh, to verify. Sure. So, um, the idea is we uh, we learn the system Verilog because it helps us to write these test functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, another difficulty is uh, in the QCs we. Because we need to have a shared M10K blocks that can be accessed by both FPGA and the host program, uh, so we use uh, QSIS to instantiate those M10K blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most difficult part to discover is that um, in the QSIS we connect the clock to the system clock, which is boosted to 100 megabyte, uh, megahertz. Mm -hmm. However, on the FPGA it's 15, uh, 15 megahertz. Um, as a result, uh, when the address is changed, the data is changing immediately, which is not our expected performance. So the memory was running at 100 megahertz, yes. and your state machine was yeah. at 50 megahertz. Yeah, but uh, M10K will delay the clock for one cycle, so ah. it just happened to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, we discovered this problem in the signal tab, and yeah. then we buffer on the FPGA side, so we have one cycle delay, which is as expected. Okay, okay. Uh, then all the stuff is work perfect. That is that is a very nice, awesome. Thank you.